last hour of the show, uh, gradually getting to the end of it. And uh, let's talk about emancipation and uh, the African's uh, idea of coming back to your roots. That's what it's all about. And uh, it, it's a celebration that uh, has attracted a lot of attention these days. Uh, people from the diaspora will be yes. uh, prepared to move down to uh, parts of uh, areas where the slave trade is said to have occurred yeah. to be part of it as St. Manso and other places. Yeah. But this morning, we'll have this together for you uh, so that you can recall uh, some of the uh, activities performed when uh, emancipation Yeah, is. I think it was on emancipation. You know, right. they say Ghana is the, the gateway to Africa, right. well, the black star of Africa. So we, mm. we are seen as the homeland of people of African descent. Right. Um, you know, in and the it's diaspora. interesting. So now, when you visit the castles, the kind of stories that you get... Oh boy, the harrowing to, yes, experiences. Yes. I, 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 I was at the Cape Cod Castle and I, I saw the dungeon and I was like, really? People were kept in yes, here yes. and wondered. I've, I've been there Sometimes I stay at home one day times. and I, I begin to shiver. Yes, you feel, you feel so encaged. And, and so I'm imagine... Like, people are kept yes, here. Yes. So, but you see, there's also an argument about you know, whether or not it's necessary to keep going back to a roots and reminding ourselves of all these harrowing experiences. Mm. There are people who think that it's time to forge ahead and move forward. But can, and, and we, stop can this we remember? Retrogression. Can we remember so that based on that we can remember make Remember to do what? You see, but where the decisions to avert what happened in the past. Man's desire to overpower uh, another man, okay, uh, it's what resulted in, in what happened to our, yeah. our forefathers. Yes. But like you said, a, a lot of benefits seem to have come back to the, the, the African because some of our brothers and sisters managed to get some level of education when they found themselves there. The only problem is that perhaps they haven't come back to, to repair so the, the damage. Exactly, which, which yeah, leads I, me to that question. Then are so we totally emancipated? Bring, well, we, are we? we? For me, we are not. But uh, it brings them back home to take, come and look at what happened here. And then uh, we can see how we can correct that mistake in order not to fall into it again. But the key thing is that if your leaders will take the responsibility of managing what they have and putting it together, this idea of uh, emancipation uh, I think uh, yes, we'll and I mean this is why people don't know if it holds much of a meaning. You know, mm. uh, today we're still talking about new colonization. It's right. are we totally emancipated? We we'll leave that to you. So take a look at this. The story of slavery is one that has been told for centuries, maybe not as accurately or frequently as needed. Some argue freedom as we have come to know it is simply a cloak covering up the scars and truth of a horrendous era never to be forgotten. In an attempt to find true freedom and bond Africans the world over, Emancipation Day has for 18 years been celebrated in honor of heroes who fought and dedicated their lives to ensuring that the black man was independent and had the liberties every human being is entitled to. It is stated that for blacks to know who they are, where they come from is a good way to start. is in the center of the earth. There is a, a passage in the Bible that says that, you know, the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, as it is in heaven, so shall your kingdom be built on earth. And the question is, in the Bible, there's a statement that says, God's kingdom on earth is in the center of the earth. So you have many reverend ministers, you know what I mean, uh, you know, talking about that, that Ghana is important in that regard. And I do believe that, but uh, more over than that, Ghana had there were 66 slave forts between Senegal and Angola. Now I have to give you the statistics on that just a moment. 66 slave forts, Ghana had 46 of the 66. So that simply means the lounge share 
of many of the captives that were taken out of here. They are either from Ghana or they came through Ghana. Hundreds of Africans from the diaspora return to the continent they call home for the Emancipation Day celebrations. The celebrations begin in the capital Accra with a wreath-laying ceremony for heroes such as Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, W.E.B. Du Bois and George Padmore. George Padmore was a leading Pan-Africanist, journalist and author who left Trinidad in 1924 to study in the United States and from there moved to the Soviet Union, Germany and France before settling in London and toward the end of his life settled in Accra, the capital of Ghana. W.E.B. Du Bois was one of the most important African-American activists during the first half of the 20th century. He co-founded the NAACP to support Pan-Africanism. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, a leading Pan-Africanist, led the Gold Coast Drive for independence from British rule. The new nation Ghana championed the cause for a united and great Africa. Our independence is really less unless it's linked up the total liberation of the African continent. The journey to relive the dark days and remember our ancestors takes us to Cape Coast, home to prominent colonial relics, evidence of what once was. Colorful procession of Asafo companies go through the streets of Cape Coast, signifying victory for all Africans. When they were building the castle, which became the trading post of slaves, slavery, a group of able young men found themselves to be their laborers who were building the castle. Because the things that were being done currently by the military were being done by the Asafo company. When they found themselves, you know, in that situation, they formed an Asaf company from it. I have said several times that the acquisitiveness of man came into being from our very, very first existence. So that when you have a piece of land and you are not very strong, others who are stronger than you conquer you and take your land. Other sub companies or states also found it necessary to come in and acquire our lands, acquire our people. That was the basis, the beginning of the slave trade. Unfortunately, you see, we as chiefs in the olden days played a very important role in slavery, in perpetuating slavery. But you see, what can we say? Whatever that you do, there are good things and there are bad things. We say that the history of slavery is very bad, but then we have tried to draw strength from it so that currently we are trying to turn the unfortunate situation that slavery brought onto us into a positive situation. That, I believe, is what has been started in the emancipation celebration. Their subcompany fought in every war, every single war. When the John Mensa Sabas, the Dijab Johnsons, the Gadra Aquas, when they were fighting and agitating for the end of slavery, they were buoyed up by the near mention of Asafo companies and the songs and the, the show of bravado I mentioned and others that, because of time I cannot mention them, would have been able to perform the things that they did that have, have made their names household. Names. Say yo, say yo, Asim Praso in the Asim North Municipality derives its name from its proximity to the Pra River. The river defined the boundary of the Ashanti region and the central region. 
Besides the murky evidence of illegal mining the river carries today, it also holds the dark truth of our history as people captured from the northern parts crossed the river into Asim Praso, rested for a while, then continued the journey. We've been to the castle, we've seen the shrine. What's the message you're getting from all of this? The message that I'm getting from all of this is that our people went through a lot. And it's not easy for us as diasporians to come back and see what our people went through, even though we know um, the, the harm that was done to them. The spirit that comes upon you is so overwhelming. You don't know how to explain it. And that spirit is a reconnecting spirit back to your roots, back to your, your ancestors that were brutally murdered, brutally beaten just for the pleasure of the white man. That is very heart-wrenching. I can get the sadness and how you feel, but not to even make it worse, here we are at these mass graves where each one of them contains no less than 300 people who were buried as if they were nothing. Yes, look at the gravesite. Look at, look at this gravesite. Is this what our ancestors should be honored with? They don't have a tombstone, no anything. It's just dirt, but it's okay because they're going back to their ground, to the earth where they come from. We don't need beauty. They try to take that away from us, but we still have that beauty. And they know that. They are fighting a losing battle. We have already won this battle. No matter what they have done to our people, no matter what they're trying to still do to us, we have already won. We have to recognize that we are the kings and queens and we have to live up to that expectation. That's who we are. So it may be sad that yes, over 300 of our people have been brutally murdered and buried here with no respect. But we are giving them that respect today for what they have done for, done for us and to allow us to be able to come back and connect back to our roots. We are, we are, we are grateful for that. We are so thankful and we are very favored. And we say thank you. And we say we are sorry. And we appreciate what you have gone through for us. We are back home, because this is our home. And we stand on their shoulders. We will stand strong for this country, because this is our country. No one is going to take that from us again. It will not happen again. Because we are here, we will stop it. I come a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and return to my home, sweet home. Asim Manso is where the slaves took their last bath in the non costume meaning Slave River, before being sent to be kept in dungeons at the Cape Coast and Elmina castles to be shipped into slavery. The river today is said to have great healing powers. In the midst of our dark past, we have found the light. With candles lit, many trace the footsteps of our ancestors on reverential night, clad in white, singing of the victory and the hope of an emancipated Africa. In these 
these dungeons, our ancestors were held as slaves. Tonight, we have poured libation. We have purified ourselves. We have paid homage to our ancestors. But has the message really gone down? Do we really understand our African identity? The theme for the 2016 Emancipation Day celebrations was empowering African youth through Pan-African culture. Though the young generation joined the celebration, they seemed oblivious of what the celebrations represented, bringing into question the impact of history on today's youth and what the African identity really is or should be. Had the young folks simply lost their way, all the celebrations had failed to establish the relevance of our past and where we are. Along the line, the organizers marginalized the Ghanaians and they did not establish a component of an educational outreach program to go along with that, to educate Ghanaians to the significance and the dynamics of Panafest and emancipation. So pretty soon, it became in the Ghanaians' mind, well, hey, Charlie, that is nothing but an African diaspora thing. Why should we participate? And see, and nobody tried to fill that vacuum of education. And this is what I'm telling them today. We need symposia. We need educational fora, not just one time. You know, you wait till emancipation comes, and then within a week you put on educational No, no, this must be going on in all 10 regions of Ghana, especially in the North, because many of our people who were taken into slavery were taken from the North and marched down this way, you understand me? So that is the reason why we say it became, instead of Panafest, it became Panamess. Everything in Ghana, everything in Africa, reminds us of those who go to inflict brutality and oppress Africa. Our laws, our state customs, our labels, all bear the colonial imprint. What do I say? There are the colonized minds controlling our space. And that is most difficult for a lot of people to accept because they don't even know that their minds have been colonized. The first thing we must do is to stop the decline of appreciation for what is African. We must learn how to respect and love ourselves and value our culture that was given to us by our ancestors. If it wasn't for our culture that our ancestors preserved, we would not be as a people. It is only a culture that makes us a people. So we must begin to love our language, love our food, love our dress, love what it is that espouses our Africanness and put value on that. It is the simple things, it's not difficult things. And so we, we find that we are now fashioning ourselves and, and the culture of our foreign people. We even put more value on used European clothing than we put on our African attire and our wear. What is more colorful? What is more fanciful? What is more valuable than our own wear? We put more value on foreign foods, on fried rice and our own banku, our kinke. You know, we have espoused our culture and we have actually adopted foreign cultures which has devalued ourselves. The simple things we can do is to pick up those things that, are, that belong to us. We can only be our best when we are ourselves. We cannot be the best when we're emulating and copying someone else. We can only be a carbon copy. We cannot be an original. We can only be original when we copy ourselves and be ourselves. The Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture and the Ghana Tourism Authority, however, are devising ways to have more impact. We have a very committed uh, leader at the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, that's Mrs. Lisbeth Obosujai. Since she's been appointed since 2013, one of the things that we've been doing, work with young people in the schools, and one of the key things is that we want to draw home the concept of Nkrumah talking about African personality. The idea that I'm not an African, you should be proud of who you are. You know, one of the things that we want to be able to imbibe of them, their culture. They need to be sure about their culture, their history. And throughout the whole schools, we have true tourism society of Ghana. We are working with them to establish tourism and cultural, you know, clubs. And in these clubs, we talk about our culture, how our children have evolved into a republican state and the importance of chief chancy, the relevance of chief even within the 1992 constitution, the role of the customer law, and so on and so forth. We are doing this, but it's a gradual movement. What we tend to do, hopefully, God willing, we are alive next year. We're going to do a regional-based emancipation throughout the 10 regions, culminating into an open debate and discussion, you know, with, with young people in Cape Coast. Next year, God willing, will be Panafest. The people of Ugwa, Nana Sarbama, and his people have decided that they want to own Panafest and emancipation, so that we can use it to mobilize, you know, everybody in Ghana, using the National House of Chiefs and so on and so forth. So we want to make sure that emancipation will not only be occurring in Cape Coast, but throughout the whole country. People understand and appreciate what emancipation is all about. 
It is about African personality. It is about fighting for social justice. It is about challenging inequalities. And above all, the right for the young people to be able to participate in their own life. The right for individuals to have dignity for work. That's what we are trying to do. The quest for a truly emancipated Africa continues. For the many ancestors who fought the good fight, and for the many Africans returning to their roots, their names shall forever be engraved in the walls of history. I told you the only way to uh, go forward is to look back at where you're coming from. That's